Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of HRD 631, The Adult Learner. I hope things are going well for everybody so far in the course. Um, you must be looking forward to having a week off from school next week, not this coming week, but starting on, eight, on March 11. So I will quickly go over that and just give you a preview of week number eight, which we are entering. And I do apologize. I thought I'd get this done yesterday. I've been fighting a, a really bad cold. And um, as you can see, I didn't get to it. So I apologize. I figured the materials out there would be fine, at least for one day. And so here is the weekly video. I'll give you just a very quick overview. The video that I'm recording is right here. We have various topics coming up in this week critical theory, postmodern theory, feminist pedagogies or feminist perspectives in adult learning. And each one of these could be a standalone 14-week course, but they're squashed into one week. This is a, as you know, a survey course, and I've mentioned that before. So what I'd like you to do is read chapter 11. We have an electronic Reserve article, Critical and Postmodern Perspectives in Adult Learning. Um, you got the link down below. And then I did want to specifically mention this. I Originally, I was going to include the readings or make it a requirement to read a an excerpt from each one of these. Basically, not basically, the assignment is you pick one of these topics. Each one of these, there's an excerpt located in the electronic reserves. So you pick, just say, Dodson's work, come up here, look for that, and you can find, you'll find an expert, a excerpt. It is not the entire book. It's just an excerpt. And the reason for that I've included in this week, because I thought maybe next week on spring break, people will either want to, on their own, they might start one and then say, this just isn't speaking to me, so I want to switch and read Black Elk Speaks. Um, the idea behind reading this is learning about how other people learn. And, and it could be Taylor's book, How Does, how Does Taylor Learn from Having a Stroke, which is a pretty deep profound way of learning. And so these will not be discussed um, until week number nine. There will be a discussion question that I'll put out there in week number nine, which is the week after spring break. So once again, if you have time and you want to kind of explore some of these, you'll have all next week, which is spring break week to do that. I have a PowerPoint. Um, YouTube video on, on women, women ways of knowing. Now this was a book and this was research that, uh, really has impacted me at this point. It's, it's, it's not brand new research, but really it was, it was first of its kind research about how women go from silence to voice. And that's the process, silence to voice. And, I've had numerous students over the years say to me, well, is it just women that do that? And the, my answer is no, it is not just women. But based upon the research in here, and I'll just tell you a quick story. Um, when I was working for the Maine Forest Service, a group of us got together. We received money and or received grant money, and we put together a program for women women owning land, meaning forest land, in northern New England, Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. And we put a program together specifically based upon how women generally learn. And I, I hate to even say that now because um, women learn similarly to men and vice versa. But what the research, the early research was showing were things like Women like to learn in a collaborative basis. Um, women do not like to be put, 
put down or feel intimidated. And I can tell you a lot of the organizations that support small woodland owners or people that own forest land owners in the United States are generally run by men. And I've had leading up to this grant, I've had many women landowners that they might have been associated with the piece of land for many years, but their husband took care of it. And I would ask them things like in the research shows, how do you feel when you go to one of these woodland owners meetings? And overwhelmingly, people would say, I don't go to those because I intimidate it. I, I feel intimidated. And I'll have more information on this as we move forward. I won't, don't want to beat this to death, uh, but it's a profound subject for me personally. And, and I've studied it and I've led workshops specifically on this, including one of the earlier workshops when we had uh, skeptical staff, as I will say in one of the, uh, just not skeptical staff, but there was some skeptical participants. And I had one person say to me um, after the workshop, you, meaning me, you need to work on your self-esteem because you are, this is a true story. You are the expert in this subject, and you need to come across as an expert in the subject. Um, in effect, he said to me, you need to man up. And I've never forgotten that. For those that know me, know, yes, I identify as a male, but that's the furthest thing from the truth when it comes to, when it comes to me. And so um, these subjects that we're, we're looking at this week are deeply uh, profound to me. So the assignment, uh, the assignment was due yesterday, which is the learning reflection paper. If you have not submitted that yet and you need a couple of days, uh, that's fine. Uh, just, just submit it as soon as you can. I'd like to get to all of the gradings on Wednesday, but if you need a little more time in that, let me know. Um, that is really what I wanted to cover in, in this. I want to do mention specifically spring break is March 11th through the 17th. No classwork is expected at that time. Now, that said, March 18th will restart the class. I will probably next weekend make the materials available for week nine, only because I don't want people to be working on it unless you want to. We're adult learners in this class. Everybody is in charge of their own time, or maybe you're not in charge of your own time, and you may be a K-12 teacher and have a little more time next week during spring break, and you're not going to Disneyland, which I am not. Um, I'll be here. I have, I have work to get done. And so... I'm going to make the materials available next Sunday for week number nine. So beyond that, no work is expected, but if you want to do some work, that's fine with me. Okay, everybody, I hope you have a great week. If you have not submitted your paper yet, please do so as soon as possible. If you're struggling with it and you need some help, please reach out to me. Okay, we'll see you online, and I hope you have a fabulous week. Bye, everybody.